Hello. Sometimes we get into trouble because we don't know what the rules are. Sometimes we get into trouble because we don't think anybody will discover that we're breaking the rules. And sometimes we get into trouble because we don't believe that the rules will be enforced. And sometimes everything that we think we know backfires. We have a delightful opportunity today to learn what the rules are concerning sexual assault. We have a wonderful attorney who has volunteered to speak about that as an educational program. It's my delight to present to you the rules on sexual assault. Please join us. It may help you or somebody you love. Stay out of trouble. Please welcome Attorney Daryl Stallworth. I was born and raised in Compton, California, where I learned a lot about the streets. I made my way to Berkeley, California to go to school at Cal and then UC Davis for law school. I worked 15 years as a prosecutor and I saw more crime than any man should ever have to see. Welcome to another program on how to stay out of jail, hosted by me, Daryl Stallworth. You've already hopefully been able to see a couple of my other programs where I've talked to you about my ability to take my experiences from having been born and raised in Compton, having lived 43 years, more importantly, having gone to law school, spent 15 years as a prosecutor, and then the last year and a half as a criminal defense attorney. And being able to draw from all of the cases I've been involved in, all the people that I've worked with, all the people that I've represented, to come to you and bring you some information that I believe will help you stay out of jail, plain and simple. I like to try to give analogies of some of the things that have taken place. I'll share with you some of the law. I'll walk you through what happens if you're ever arrested or charged or convicted of any of these crimes. And what I want to do is, one, it'll give you enough information so that you can know what to do if something happens to you or if you're investigated for some of these crimes. But more importantly, give you an idea of how these crimes take place and what happens so that you can know ahead of time to make sure that you don't put yourself in these positions. To make sure you do those things that don't even allow you to make the mistakes that many people make and you have to deal with the painful consequences. So the day's topic is the particularly important topic. It's one of the areas of law that I believe is most misunderstood by almost everyone, including prosecutors, criminal defense attorneys, and judges. And it's the area of law that I title sexual assault. What does that word mean? Where does it come from? Uh, there are a number of penal code sections that you can look at and see all the different crimes that are associated with sexual assault. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break them up into a couple of areas. I'm going to talk about some of the misdemeanor crimes. I'm going to talk about statutory rape. And then I'm going to talk about the more serious felony crimes, which sometimes result in life imprisonment sentences. We're going to talk about the first low-level misdemeanor crimes of sexual battery and what that crime is, what's involved with it, and how you can make sure that you never ever have to deal with this type of crime. And what we're going to begin with is the sexual battery. What does that mean? Sexual battery means basically that if you touch another person's private part in a way that is not consensual, in a way that is aggressive, in a way that makes that other person uncomfortable, then you can be charged and maybe eventually convicted of sexual battery. The penal code section that I'm referring to is 243 in the penal code section. And that says that if you are touching someone in an unlawful way, in persons, uh, places on their body that are private, and what we're talking about is the breast, the buttock, the vaginal area, any touching, even if it's on the outside of the clothing, now, as you can imagine, in any particular situation, um, if you're with someone that's an adult or if you're with someone that's consenting, even being in a car or being at a party or being on a date uh, does not allow you to have any type of touching whatsoever that's not consensual. 
one of the biggest issues, as you can imagine, is the area of consent. Does this person consent to me touching her or touching him? Does this person understand and is this person familiar enough with me to know that this is what we are interested in doing? Oftentimes that question is never answered because you don't ask the question and then you wind up finding yourself being investigated about this crime. It's a misdemeanor and as I've spoken to you before, misdemeanors are crimes that will not result in any type of state prison sentence, but you could be placed in custody for up to a year in a county jail. Most often you're going to be given some jail time, you're going to be required to take some type of course, you're going to be required to be on three years of probation, which means you're going to be subject to search of your person, your property, and your car, and there are going to be fines attached. But as you could imagine, to have this type of crime on your record is going to be very, very difficult for you to be employable. It's going to be very, very difficult for you to get jobs in law enforcement, in any type of public arena, because this is the type of crime that most people are going to tend to believe that if they hire you, you're going to be subjecting the other employees to this type of behavior. All of which, um, unfortunately for a lot of people who I've seen come through this system, um, is a result of them not understanding exactly what they're doing and what this crime entails. Um, I can tell you about a case years ago where I remember a, a grocery store and a owner of that store had an employee who he was working with and he thought that they were having a romantic relationship. Well, of course, the female did not agree with that and he would oftentimes touch her in ways that were inappropriate. And eventually she reported it and he was investigated and charged. He wound up losing his ability to run the store. He wound up being convicted. He wound up having to do jail time. And my message through this story is if he had understood and realized, one, that that is not healthy and it's not moral, but two, the consequences of just touching someone, even on the outside of the clothing, um, resulted in this misdemeanor behavior, this behavior that will in fact make it difficult for him to probably own and manage any other type of stores. Um, the theme, as I've always said when I give these presentations, is to understand ahead of time the different scenarios. When I've talked to people in college and I've talked to high school kids, I've found them also not understanding that touching someone, even if you think it's in a playful way, you're on campus at high school or college and you see a male or female that you might be interested in or you're just joking around with. And if you touch them on the breast or you make a, jo a joke and you touch them on the butt, you can be investigated, you can be arrested and you can be charged. And you would have to have that on your record. So what I'm telling you is to do everything you can to acknowledge and know that you cannot even come close to putting yourself in this environment and to um, behaving in this type of way because there are serious criminal consequences. Statutory rape is having intercourse with a person that's under the age of 18. Now here are the numbers. Most people don't realize this. If you're an adult male or if you're a male and you're 18 years old and a young lady is 17 years old and you have consensual intercourse, something she's willing to do, that's statutory rape. If that young lady were to report to her mother, her father, her aunt, her teacher, her coach, that you, a 17-year-old or 18-year-old young man, had sex with her, then you would be charged. And you could be charged with statutory rape. You would be placed on probation. You would most likely have to do some time. You would have to deal with a fine. And you would have to have that on your record. Um, most people don't understand, but that is absolutely the law. Now, as you can imagine, oftentimes, this particular scenario is never reported because you've got a lot of consensual 17 and 18 year old young men and women that are engaged in intercourse. But unbeknownst to them and unbeknownst to most of the public, it is an unlawful act under the eyes of the law. It's Penal Code Section 261.5. Now, what the law also says is that if you are 18 years old or older and you're a male, and you have sex with a woman who's under the age of 18 and three or years younger than you are, then the penalty is enhanced and you're looking at a felony statutory rape. 
Now this scenario happens, as you might imagine, oftentimes on college campuses where you've got a 19-year-old a freshman going to school, and he's at a party, and he finds himself you know, getting ready to you know, have a relationship with someone who he believes also may be in college. But it's probably a high school student who's there visiting or coming to the party. And she's 16, she's 17. And those two people wind up having consensual sex. And then someone finds out, normally it's the parent, the guardian, or some teacher. And that 19-year-old kid who has managed to do well enough to get into college, has managed to do well enough to have a bright future in front of them, they're getting a knock on their door, or they're getting that phone call saying that we need you to come down and we need to talk to you about these allegations. And they're being investigated for statutory rape. Now here are some of the things that this young man will say, and I've heard said over the years. Well, she looked like she was 18. She showed me an ID that she was 18. You know, she talked to people. She told me she was with people who were over 18 years old. And all of that does not matter. This is what we call a strict liability offense. There's no defenses to it. You know, she could look like she was 40 years old. She could have showed you ID. She could have given you a birth certificate. The law says that if we determine that this young lady is under the age of 18 and you are three years older than she is, then that's a felony. And a felony goes on your record for sexual assault. It goes on your record and it stays there. And it puts you in a position where you have all those problems that I talked about before, which is being employable. You may even have a problem being able to stay in college. So suppose you're not even a college student, you're just uh, working and you're making a living and you find yourself at a party or you, know, you meet somebody and you go out on a date and you wind up having intercourse with this person and it's consensual. And you haven't done the things that I'm telling you have to do right now, which is you have to find out who this person is. You have to find out how old they are. Their looks, their IDs, whatever they're going to say, whatever they're going to tell you, it's not going to matter. If you're going to meet someone, if you're going to find yourself having a sexual relationship with this person, then you're going to have to spend some time knowing who this person is. You're going to have to find out how old they are. And it's not going to be enough as to what they tell you. Find out if they're going to school, if they have a job. Find out some information about this person that's going to help you know and understand that you're not going to be looking at statutory rape. I can remember a case not too long ago where um, a young man was promoting a different party at a club and there were people hanging out and who wanted the party as well. A young lady who looked like she could have been 30 years old. And before you knew it, they had made a connection and they were you know, having intercourse the next day. It turns out that this young lady was 14 years old and this man was 22. Not only was he looking at a felony, but he was looking at going to prison. Because on a felony statutory rape, the prison terms are two years, three years, and four years. So what turned out to be, in this person's mind, a night out at a party, making a connection and having intercourse, wind up causing him having to spend two years in state prison with no defense, absolutely no defense. So make a point and understand, and I'll go over the numbers again with you. Any woman who's under the age of 18 years old who has sex with any man who's 17 or older, that is a misdemeanor um, statutory rape. You're going to be on probation, you're going to have to pay a fine, you're going to have to do some time, but that'll be county jail time. If you are a male that is over the age of 18, or 19 years old and you're having sex with someone that are three years or younger than you are, then you're looking at um, a felony and you're looking at possible state prison, which is two years, three years, or four years. Uh, there are some states that say if you are having sex with someone that are under the age of 17 and you are 10 years older than that person, there's a mandatory minimum of five years state prison. And I suspect that sometime in the near future, California won't be that far away from that particular type of minimum exposure. So pay attention and understand that as best you can, know who you're going to be with, understand who this person is. You know, the moral to the story is spend some time getting to know the people that you're going to be having relationships with. Because if you don't, you can come back and it could put you in jail. It could put you into a place where 
you're going to have to deal with the consequences of an act that you could prevent if you take this information that I'm giving to you right now. This last area that I'm going to talk to you about has to do with what most people identify as rape. Now, I know when I started as a prosecutor years ago, I was like a lot of people where, in my mind, rape meant that somebody was going to snatch somebody off the street, drag them into an alley, and then force themselves upon them, either by threat, force, or with a weapon. But what I've come to know and understand that the majority of the cases that are taking place out there are dealing with people who actually know each other, people that are in a dating relationship, people that oftentimes are even married to each other. The law is very clear, and I'm going to try to make it as clear to you as possible so that you can understand what this charge and what this crime means. The law says that penetration, however slight, of the penis into the vagina is sexual assault, is rape. And that if that young lady does not consent in any way, shape, or form, then you violated the law. And that is rape. Now, the areas that surround that particular clear and defined element of the law is what gets often people into a lot of trouble because they don't understand what that means, the word consent. So I'll take you through a couple of scenarios, some of the cases that I've known over the years that I've been involved in, to help you understand what no means and how you can find yourself in this situation and how you're going to make the right decisions. You're at a party, you're at a club, or you're on a date with someone. And if you are on a date with someone, or if you just met someone, that does not mean consent. That doesn't mean that this is a prelude to something that's going to happen. Um, you wind up parking somewhere, you wind up you know, going outside someplace that's private, or you wind up finding yourself at your apartment or her apartment. That's not consent. But there's a mentality out there that exists that says that these things are things that people oftentimes think that it's going to be consensual, but it's not. You have to understand from the get-go that there's nothing that's happening in those scenarios that's saying anything about consent. So let's take a little bit further. You find yourself um, kissing, you find yourself fondling, all of which is consensual. But at a point when the young lady said something or does something that lets you know or lets any reasonable man know that this is not going to happen, you can understand and realize that most men are going to be able to tell you that's hard to define. When do you know that's going to happen? But well, this is what I'm going to tell you, and it's just what it is. I'm going to try to keep it straight every time I give you these presentations. Any inclination, any slight hesitation, anything means that it's not consent. Because you don't want to have a jury. You don't want to have other people trying to define to you what consent is. Because you're going to have to make that decision. Because it's going to come down to you. So you have to bend over backwards to understand that anything close to showing that it's not consensual means that it's not consensual. You can't guess on something like this. Because guessing or thinking that you're still in that area where it might be consensual, or maybe he really wants this, or maybe you know it just takes some time, that's not going to happen, and that's not going to fly. So I know of cases where men have found themselves in situations where the woman has taken her clothes off. Where the woman has laid in the bed and the woman has made herself available and they believe in their mind as most people might think that this might be consensual but the moment that you touch her or you do anything and there's a reaction that says no or a reaction that even says that i'm not ready that means that that stops because actions thereafter and you may not think it's fair but i'm just telling you what the law is actions thereafter could be and oftentimes will be interpreted as assault that's non-consensual behavior. And you will wind up getting that phone call, or you will wind up being arrested that night, or sometimes a day later, sometimes a week later, and being investigated for sexual assault. So the message and the point in this area is to do everything you can to understand beforehand. If you're with someone that you're not comfortable with, someone that you're not familiar with, and you get into a place where there's a question about whether or not this is consensual, then you have to say no and you have to remove yourself from the environment. This actually goes for both men and women. Let me, let me take you through a little bit of that. For a rape, uh, 
sexual penetration of the penis, however slight into the vagina, or digital penetration, or, or finally that's non-consensual, um, that's done by force, fear, or threat, you're looking at five, seven, or nine years in prison. You're looking at exposure and time. You're looking at um, pretty much having to deal with registering as a sexual offender. And that registration is called Penal Code Section 290, which means that you will be registered for the rest of your life. It means that every time you go to a city, a town, a school, any place, you have to register with the sheriff's department. You have to let them know that you are a sexual offender. It means oftentimes that you can't even live in places that are closest to schools or close to a church or close to anywhere where a child is. You know, you're not going to be able to teach. You're not going to be able to coach. You will be prevented from doing almost anything that will allow you any interaction with the public and particularly children. Um, it's an incredibly powerful registration that stays with you basically for the rest of your life on top of having to do the time. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what happens when you're talking about the child molestation cases and dealing with having acts that are sexually assaultive upon children that are 10 years and younger. Because when that happens, you're talking about 15 in life. You're talking about the possibility of never even getting out of prison. So back to the, the adult non-consensual sex by force, fear, or threat um, and those consequences. Understand and make a note of it. There's also an area that has come up on a number of occasions in cases that I've been involved with where there's alcohol involved or even drugs. And you get a situation where, say, the young lady has been drinking, and maybe you've been drinking as well, and you're both in this intoxicated state. And you find out that this young lady is, is drunk, uh, so she's not saying no. In fact, she's not even saying anything or doing anything to tell you that this is not supposed to happen. But you understand, and if the law believes that a reasonable man would have understood that this woman is too intoxicated to give consent, and you have sex with her, then that's rape. Plain and simple. And there are many cases that are out there like that where uh, a man would come in and say, you know, this person is um, fine. She never said no. She never said that this wasn't going to happen. In fact, she was aggressive. In fact, she was the one who pursued me. But you know, either by having watched her drink or by seeing how intoxicated she is, that you know that this person isn't in their right mind. And that could also be because of narcotics. And if you, in the law's mind and in the jury's mind, take advantage of this person and have sex with her, then that's rape. And there's been a number of cases like that out there. You might remember the uh, Darren Russell case, the guy who used to play for the Raiders, who unfortunately passed away in a car accident not too long ago. You know, he actually was on tape with a young lady who um, he believed was having consensual sex with him. It turns out that she was so intoxicated that he was actually arrested and charged with rape because the law says, and whether you believe in it or whether you think it's fair or not, the law says that if you are taking advantage of someone, that you know and should have known is intoxicated and they can't tell you whether or not they want to be involved in this act, then, in fact, you are uh, responsible and you're going to be charged with rape going on. Because if you're not and you wind up in that gray area and you wind up making a decision that you think is right or lawful and it's not, the consequences are painful. So take this information, you can read up on it, you can take a look at the uh, internet and go to the handbook for statutory rape. You can look up all these topics and you can understand and learn so that you can make the right decisions so that you don't ever find yourself picking up these cases and you can continue to be healthy, be wise, and to stay out of jail. Thank, thank Daryl and thank you for joining us and spreading the information to those you care about.
Yeah, way up there, but that dust is rising. There are horsemen coming down behind those cattle, way off in the distance. This is the second ride coming into lunch camp. We are in cattle country in beautiful Northern California. Up on the hill behind those cows coming down the mountain are horsemen, a lot of horsemen. This is Backcountry Horsemen's Catered Ride, a once in a year event. They're coming. They're coming. How warm was it? We are in beautiful Humboldt County, California. We're just a stone's throw from the ocean here. Horsemen in this ride will ride down to the beach as well. This is real cattle country. This is privately owned ranch land that opens itself once a year only to backcountry horsemen's catered ride. This is a very, very special event. Just wipe this all in your face here. Yeah, I'm going to wash my face. Huh? We're going to have to keep the joy from it. Why don't I throw some water over your head, Lee? Keep it up, big dog. Boys, now, boys. Do we have to separate you? Yeah, those cattle want to get away from those horses. They're moving out. Yeah, I know. You got me. Actually, it feels pretty good on the back of the